let's begin with today's session. Uh, welcome to Dental Babathon Day 21 webinar on marketing in dentistry by Dr. Vikram Venkateswan. Let me begin with an, a short intro of Dr. Vikram. Dr. Vik Vikram Venkateswaran is a passionate sales and marketing professional with over a decade of experience in strategic marketing, influencer marketing, social media and digital marketing. He has worked for and advised global companies in healthcare, life sciences and technology industries. Currently, he has the marketing function at Altimetric. He has previously worked in the marketing function at CSC, Wipro and IBM. Dr. Vikram started his career as a dentist and created and developed a dental practice in New Delhi. He is also an avid blogger, runs three blogs on his key focus areas, which is India, healthcare and football. With a view to put the spotlight on lesser known homegrown brands, the Desi brand strategy focuses on how these brands can use marketing to grow. He is a keen observer of developments in public healthcare and associated areas and has started India's first independent blog, Healthcare in India, focused on public health. The Soccer Pill, www.soccerpill.com, is a blog dealing with the financial and management aspects of the game of football. Dr. Vikram is a guest blogger for third party publications like Social Media Today, HIMSS Future Care. He is also a public speaker at various business and management forums. Some of the forums that he has recently spoken at include Toastmasters Leadership Institute 2014 in Bangalore, CXO Power Meetup IAMAI 2014 in Bangalore, Communication Quotient 2013 in Bangalore, Global eHealth Forum in Hamburg. With a short introduction, I would like to hand over the presentation to Dr. Vikram. Dr. Vikram, over to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Mayur. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mayur, actually. Uh, and uh, and a warm uh, welcome to all of you on this uh, what I think is my I believe is my first webinar exclusively to dentists I think I've never done one exclusively to dentists before so it's a it's a first for me it's a, it's a it's a pretty mild afternoon in Bangalore today I know it must be getting very cold in the northern part of the country as well so on this uh, mild uh, day uh, let me begin by asking you, uh, all of you, a very silly question. That how many of you are actually not on Facebook? Is there anybody who is not on Facebook? Okay. So, everybody is. If you are, so maybe do we have uh, any response? Uh, no, anybody? I think everybody is there on Facebook, right? Okay, excellent, brilliant. So all of you have already taken a giant first step in kind of uh, a building your practice for the future. Right? There is one dentist, Dr. Akshaya Patel. She is not on Facebook, it seems. Awesome. So at least I have one person to convert. So that's great. That's brilliant. So what I, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, and that's remarkable that there's somebody not on Facebook. I mean. Very rarely will I find somebody who's not there on the phone. But anyway, so what we, what I'm going to discuss today is uh, though I would have loved to cover marketing for dentists and and probably we can do a session later. I want to, I want this session to be very specific to Facebook for a number of reasons. And uh, top among them is how you can leverage Facebook to actually build your practice, to engage your patients, to to build a community of, of your patients and, and you and your fellow dentists, right? How can you use Facebook for that? And uh, often I have heard a lot of stories about Facebook. Uh, actually, when I started my uh, journey on social, a lot of people told me Facebook is for children. You know, that's what kids do, teenagers. Not anymore, you know, not anymore. When I knew Facebook was not cool and not for children anymore when my dad joined Facebook and he sent me a friend invite. Just imagine my father who wants to know what I'm up to. And then my father-in-law joined Facebook and that day it stopped becoming cool, right? It, become, it became a serious business platform because what we don't realize today, at least in India, is that Facebook is probably one of the largest communities in India uh, when it comes to online communities. and uh, 
Today we have a lot of people on Facebook. Uh, these people, they are essentially patients. If they are not they are not patients now, they might be patients in the future. Prospective patients, uh, relatives of patients, caretakers of patients. So, in my opinion, uh, as a as a healthcare professional, the way I look at Facebook today is that it's a community of a lot of people in India who seek health care. That includes dental care. So you should be on Facebook not to share what you had for dinner yesterday or how you're feeling about the weather, but you should be on Facebook because your patients and your prospective patients and those who care for your patients are there on Facebook. It's as simple as that. And that's the context of what we're going to discuss today in the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour, right? So my, my, uh, my only request to all of you is, uh, is, is engage, uh, try to ask as many questions as possible. We're going to pause every 10-15 minutes, check with my viewer if there are any questions. Uh, we want to take, take the questions as they come along. If you don't agree with me or you don't feel I'm necessarily correct or on the right path to intervene, I love to be corrected and that gives me uh, a chance to kind of uh, learn more or change direction, right? We have no right answers today. We all have perspectives, we have directions, we have options because building a practice, building a business for the future is a very, very difficult task and, uh, and we're going to discuss some very, very interesting cases uh, both in the field of dentistry and outside of, of, of how organizations are grappling with all these changes, right? So with that, uh, uh, let's go on a lovely journey. Uh, and this is a journey of discovery for me and you as well. If for any reason you're not able to hear me, there are some issues, please again ping Mayur and he will let me know what's going on. So in case uh, uh, you wanted to know what I look like, well, uh, that picture on the left is a pretty good indication of what I look like today. Uh, I was tempted to use a very young picture, you know, right out of God's Manipal where I graduated from and uh, make you believe that I still look that young. Unfortunately, age catches up with all of us is what I look like. Um, usually, uh, you know, for the foreign audience, I sometimes uh, tell them that I look like Brad Pitt or George Clooney. But uh, as we are all dentists and we are serious people, I didn't want to take that uh, joke up right in the beginning. So we're going to discuss why you should have your profiles up on Facebook. And that's what I look like. Uh, in case some of you wondered, why is this guy talking to dentists and who the hell is he? and well, you would give a long sounding uh, introduction, but just to give some perspective, uh, this is uh, who I am, uh, BDS from College of Dental Surgery Manipal in 1999, incidentally we were the first batch that went under the, uh, under Mahe, that time and now Manipal University. Uh, since 99 to 2005, I ran my own dental practice in Delhi and uh, we were based in South Delhi at that time. Uh, wanted to do more, a long story, but I ended up uh, giving CAT in 2004, joined MBA, uh, IMT Ghaziabad in 2005 as regular MBA, uh, graduated in 2007 in marketing and strategy, joined uh, CSC, worked for Bipro, IPM. Uh, that's where I really started understanding technology and what technology can do for the field of healthcare. I worked with some very, very big hospitals in US and uh, like Kaiser Permanente and Report Health Systems. Uh, more on the technology side and then I worked with the NHS in UK. I also worked with a lot of pharmaceutical companies like J&J, &J, Amgen, Baxter, uh, and uh, Pfizer, so on. Gave me a lot of perspective how the world of technology was working for uh, for these companies. Uh, I I blog, like you said, I play tennis, uh, it brings out the best and the worst in me and I support Manchester United in football, I run three blogs. So all of that is cool. But today we're going to discuss essentially Facebook and we're going to discuss Facebook for dentists in many ways, right? So, so far uh, I, I hope uh, your interest is piqued. I want you to engage. If you have questions, shoot away right off. Uh, I will try to answer them if they are in the context of this discussion today, right under the discussion. If they are not, I will definitely get back to you with an email if, if you have any questions on marketing, on dentistry and, and other things, right? Great, so let's work on to our very first uh, page, uh, which is essentially 
a situation that all businesses face today. So I want you to take off your dentist hat for just a few minutes and think of your practice as a business, which it is. I know we are in a global business. Uh, I, I totally uh, want to be clear that I never think, uh, I never believe all the dental jokes uh, that exist. Uh, people say dentists want to make money. I disagree. I know how I ran my practice for six years. I know a lot of dentists. I know my classmates. They're serious. They really want to help people. Uh, but unfortunately, we are also running a business, you know. And uh, dental colleges don't prepare us for running the business. And they don't teach us a lot of uh, nuances of running a business. Most of us, uh, most of us either learn it uh, by working for senior dentists or uh, we learn it by uh, working with, uh, with uh, hospitals or dental practices or we learn it because some uncle's son or some chacha's son has, has, some, has some basic uh, business acumen or business degree. Some of us are born businessmen so we are pretty natural in it. But either way, what is happening today is we are living in a highly disrupted world. When I say disrupted, I mean the traditional ways of doing business are dying down. Uh, slowly and slowly. You know, there was a time when, uh, not very long ago, in, in my living memory, when we used to go to, uh, you know, electronic stores uh, to buy phones, mobile phones. Uh, we used to wait in line uh, in a restaurant shop uh, for sugar, for rice, things like that. But all that has changed now. I mean, nobody, I don't remember the last time I bought a phone uh, in a shop. I always order it online because the specifications are so standard. Uh, it doesn't make sense anymore and I get very good prices if I go online. Similarly, a lot of us have, I don't know how many of us are actually eligible for the public distribution system. Not that it was great, but we don't stand in line anymore. We order, people order grocery online. Sometimes I order sugar online. Things have changed a lot and uh, our dental practices are no exception. Just to give you a perspective of what's happening in the West, I see a lot of dental practices shutting down in the US. Smaller practices shutting down in the US because they can no longer afford uh, the, the costs of, of complying with a lot of regulations in the US. You know, you have HIPAA and you have lots of others like ICD-10 and stuff like that. And I see a lot of dental practices shutting down because the costs of running the business are too high. At the same time, there are a lot of smart dentists who have kind of adopted technology both in their practice and in management. And they have somehow bucked the trend and they have come up. And they have done very well for themselves. So when disruption enters an industry, and disruption could be any way, you know, it could be technology, it could be process, it could be common regulations, it could be anything. When disruption enters a process, it creates a situation by which what you've been doing in the past is no longer viable and it requires a very new approach, a very new perspective as to how we approach that business. Is everybody clear so far? We're talking about disruption, we're talking about how the old ways of doing business are going away. If you remember very clearly when we was younger, we used to have one family uh, doctor or a family dentist and he probably know everything about your family, how your father was, how your grandfather was and that was our only way of knowing the medical history of an individual, right? Because this one physician who was a family physician will know everything and he will have notes. Today we are entering an era where more and more people are spending a lot of time and effort on creating digital records whether they just take a prescription, scan it and put it up on uh, Google Drive or something like that. But a lot of people are spending time on digital records because that one person who was the know-all, who knew everything is no longer there. And that has been disrupted by so many doctors, multiple specialities, so many hospitals. And the same holds true for dentists. You, know, you can't keep going to the same, uh, I mean people don't go to the same dentist again and again because People move around, people lose touch, people are not able to get in touch, people don't know what's up with you. Uh, nowadays, when I, uh, I mean I still visit a dentist once in six months as we are supposed to and, and there is nothing more than a oral prophylaxis for me. But I visit this clinic called Latina in, in Bangalore and uh, the dentist keeps changing because they, they are a chain and I don't have the same dentist. So how, 
how disrupted are we? We are totally disrupted actually. At one end we are disrupted and the other end there is also technology that helps us connect. The question is, are we a part of the disruption or are we ready to connect, right? So let me give you one example which is not from the dental field, this is just to set the context. Is, uh, I don't know how many of you uh, really have used this service. Just say yes if you've used this service called Uber. How many of you used it? Uh, sir, nobody has used it, I guess. Uh, oh, yes, all knows in the chat window. Brilliant. So this is your first task today. I, I think if you have a iOS or an Android phone, if you have a mobile phone, just download this app called Uber. Uh, it's a great service. Uh, Dr. is saying uh, he has used it, I think. Okay. Very good. So essentially what happens with Uber is, Uber is, a, is actually a taxi service which is not a taxi. Essentially it is uh, an app uh, where people like you and me can also sign up and if you are going from one place to the other and we want to give somebody a ride we can, we can just take that person along and, and, uh, and drop him to wherever he wants to go. So there is Uber, Uber X, Uber XL and Uber Go. Uber Go is a new service launched in India for small cars and the rates that you get at Uber are far cheaper than a traditional auto rickshaw, right? So essentially what is happening is Uber is going to kill autos. Would you really believe that? Would anybody believe that? That in the cities in the future you may not see an auto rickshaw because they just can't keep up with something like Uber which is so brilliant. And the cars they use are normal cars which are available, which are ideal, which do not have enough people on them and they start using Uber to, uh, to kind of make sure that their taxis are utilized throughout the day. Normal people can also sign up for Uber and if you are free for a day and you want to make some money, you can just drive around somebody in your car and just drop them from place to place. It is one of the greatest disruptions uh, created by technology and it is driven by, uh, it's driven by people like you and me. So the quest point is if you don't keep up with technology, you'll be left out and, and today's context, today's Facebook discussion is a lot about that. So without further ado, let's get into the heart of Facebook, right? Um, now somebody might ask me why Facebook, I mean I can get into the details but let's look at it at, from a very, very, uh, uh, very high level, right? Facebook today is, is like a community which has lots of members, right? It is almost the third largest nation in the world uh, by numbers. It has some 500, 600 million people on it. And a lot of those people, vast majority is from the US, right? And uh, it, it, though it was created from a university, it was essentially Harvard where it was created, it spread to Stanford and it spread to all the other universities. Today it's more like keeping it, it's, it's helping you keep in touch with people, it helps you uh, connect with people, it helps you exchange notes, etc, etc. But it is also a place where 100 million people are present on Facebook. And we are the second largest country in terms of users on, in the world. That means there is a huge community on Facebook which is waiting out there in order to be tapped. I see a lot of, if you just type dentists on, on Facebook in the chat window, you will find so many dental practices, dental blogs, dental newsletters, uh, individual dentists who are on Facebook. I think almost my entire batch of Manipal is on Facebook. But, but a lot of them don't use it for building their practice or the way they can leverage it. A lot of people come to Facebook, hang around, look at pictures, like them, comment and move out. They don't treat it as a business tool and that's a big mistake. Because what essentially Facebook is, I will say going on Facebook, commenting on a few pictures, I mean first of all who wants to see pictures, right? Certain psychologists have said that 
the pictures on Facebook are a big source of resentment for most people. I mean, they say that, for example, if I am on Facebook and I go to and I and I suddenly open my picture and I see Mayur, who's posted his picture from uh, Italy, and he's uh, in Venice, he's on a gondola. Essentially, that causes more resentment in me than makes me happy, right? And uh, that is, psychologists say that is the second largest source of resentment. Uh, it's almost like uh, you know the pangs of jealousy you see when somebody else succeeds, but that's a sheer waste of time. And if that's what you've been doing on Facebook, you're wasting your time. That's not really what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about something else. And that is, look at the demographics of people on Facebook. I don't know if any of you have really studied this part, but I thought this was pretty interesting. Because surprisingly, I mean, there are still 0 to 17, 10.6%. These guys shouldn't be on Facebook actually because the minimum age to join in is 18, I think. 18 to 24 is 46%, which is the bulk of people on Facebook. And then there is 25 to 34. But as we go along, we still see 7%, and this is purely India. Okay, this is Indian demographics, this is not global demographics. And if you see towards the end here, 35 to 44, 6.6%, .6%, 45 to 54, 2.2%. I can actually visually make a map of every branch of dentistry that can be marked and targeted at the various age groups. Now some of you who are prosthodontists out there, you might argue, you know what, nobody seems to, I mean the, the category that requires dentures doesn't seem to exist here. Well, that's correct. I agree there are not too many 55, 45 year olds on Facebook in India, but this category out here, which is essentially your you are 46 uh, 46% 18 to 24 and 25% which is 25 to 34 is essentially available as an influencer to target our category for prosthodontists for example so you can just go on making a list prosthodontists endodontists pediatric surgeons i mean this is this is where most of the children are right these are the parents of, of young children so each demographic is actually very very well represented on facebook it's a question of engaging them. But it gives us a good idea that as these people get older and they move beyond these age groups, they will continue to be on Facebook and available to you as an audience. Right? Any questions so far? Um, Mayur, just a, a, um, a few seconds. Any questions so far that I've been much? Uh, not yet, sir. Okay. Brilliant. So let's go on. Now, uh, as always, doctors, you know, we have a we have a reputation of being very slow to jump onto any new technology. Uh, I think it's a very well documented fact, uh, even internationally, that healthcare is one of the final frontiers for technology. We haven't really adopted technology that far. But this is a this is a survey uh, done on dentists on Facebook, right? And the results are pretty interesting. Uh, almost 40 percent of dentists are not on Facebook. As for the survey, okay, so let's be very clear, and I don't want to assume that this represents every dentist in the world. This is a representation of the dentists who were surveyed, right, and who were available for the survey. And almost 40% were not on Facebook. So the, doc, the good, good doctor who was not on Facebook uh, actually belongs to the 40% category, which is, which is not surprising, you know. We, we as doctors take, take our time and take things very seriously. And once you think you're a, it's a waste of time, why should, why should we even bother about it? So 25% of those surveyed had a profile page, which is interesting, which is essentially means they had a profile page in which they post their pictures of Diwali, Holi, Christmas, New Year, where they went shopping, how their kids look, etc., etc. Only 35% have a page. A lot of my discussion today is going to be on the page. It's not unfortunately going to be on your profile. Though the profile and the pages are linked, what I'm essentially telling you is the real gold mine on Facebook for a dentist who's running a practice, running a large practice, medium-sized practice, or is running a hospital, or is doing anything with his with his qualification as a dentist, the real gold mine is is around this area. You know? What I would recommend is focus on this because this 35% is sorry 
I jumped the gun slightly. But this 35% is actually the one uh, is actually the one that is uh, that is leveraging Facebook to some extent, but not to a great extent, right? So we come to even that 35% what they are doing. So having a page on Facebook is 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 where the real action is. This is where the business side of Facebook starts. And a lot of our discussion today going forward is going to be on the page. It's not going to be on your profiles, right? So the other question is, uh, now this is only the 35% who have a page and we are going to dig down deeper as to what are they doing with the page, right? 90% uh, of them uh, just have very basic information. Uh, who they are, where they are, what they do, that's it. It's like a visiting card, um, except that it's on Facebook. That's the only difference. Nothing else. Which is actually a big waste, uh, it's a big loss, you know. Once you have a page, you can use it for a lot of other things. 50% uh, just talk about their specialities, like, okay, I've added a new endodontic uh, LED light cure. Okay, great, good for you. What does that mean to me? Nothing. Or they have a picture of the light cure. Or they keep their patients updated. Today we added one more branch, I opened another branch in so and so place. Great. That's actually informative, that's useful, but they stop there. And the remaining 35% uh, 35% of the 25% who have a page, they use it to network with our dentists, which is a sheer waste, you know, because you're not networking enough, not all of us can do everything. All of us have, have networks, we can actually on Facebook talk to dentists globally, we can engage with foreign dentists, get opinions, etc, etc. Uh, there is a lot of things you can do on Facebook if you have a page and you use it very, very well. And today I'm going to leave you with some ideas. You know, I'm just giving you some ideas. You want anything more, we can probably, you know, talk offline or I can send you a mail or we can do another session, when you're willing. But today I'm going to give you just a few ideas, just the tip of the iceberg. But this is what dentists are up to. Remember, just to take a recap, 40% of you are not on Facebook, which is great. And 25% of, of of dentists have a profile, but 35% have a page, and that page is very, very important. That's where the action really starts, and that's the business side of things. But those who have a page, 90% of them just have basic information about themselves, which is like their visiting card, their name, their qualification, where they graduated from, list of services, uh, what are the specialities, any updates, new brands, new equipment and hardly 35% use it to network uh, with other dentists. Almost nobody, almost nobody, according to the survey, was doing a great job of engaging with the patient community, uh, which is very interesting. Um, see, the, the patient community, and, and I just want to take a step uh, forward, because one of the biggest myths of Facebook is, the minute I put up my page, uh, and you know, if some incident happens to the patient, He's going to start talking about it and he's going to post it all over Facebook and create ruckus for me. But the point is, he's going to talk about it anyway, right? And I believe it is important for you to be out there and, and avoid a situation where he's upset rather than trying not to have a profile and, and avoiding the situation altogether because that will, won't do you any good in the long run. Maybe in the short term it really helps you, right? But vast majority do not want to talk to patients. You're not talking to patients. Somebody else is talking to them, number one. You're not talking to patients. You're not giving them information. He's getting his information anyway. If you don't give it to him, he's going to go up to some other site and get, it, get the information he wants. Uh, there are dentists all over the world who have all sorts of information on their websites. And uh, there is no lack of information for patients these days, which is one of the bigger challenges. You know, Doctors always, at least friends of mine who who I speak to, they always complain that patients read up on the internet about everything and they come and start quizzing the doctor, which is, which is one, of the, one of the problems we are facing. I mean, it's not the, we are not the only profession facing this problem. You talk to teachers, they face a similar problem. You talk to mechanics, they face a similar problem. Everybody is an expert today because information is available online, right? So dentists are no exception to the rule. 
So what we're going to talk, what I'm going to propose to you, uh, is very very simple. I'm going to take you through a journey of how you can create a page. You know, I had a I had a big question debate in my mind. Should I actually go through the mechanics of creating a page? Should I just tell you create a page and let you let you do it yourself? But I remember my time as a dentist, my knowledge of these things was very poor. Uh, maybe I was not as smart. I don't know, but I use my own experience and I realized if I walk you through this process, probably it will be a better idea. So I've taken the liberty of going through the exact steps of how you create a page so that you can get, come out of this and there is some real action, you know, that you actually are able to create your own page and you don't have to, you know, depend on others or worry how would you do it. So with that in mind, uh, let's, let's get started on the very first slide, which is build how do you build your page on Facebook? We're going to talk about building a page, right? Not a profile. Just remember the difference. And uh, I, I mean, I have to use somebody's page. I used my own page as an as an example. Uh, if you see here, uh, there are a lot of things that are available here, which includes my profile, newsfeed, blah blah blah. But here, these are my pages that exist already, and. Uh, I can create a page, right? If I click on this, and uh, you know, it keeps sending you stuff like that, uh, which which is information on my page and how many likes and post reach, etc. But before we get there, this is your first step in creating a page. You look on the left-hand column below your profile name, and this is at the home button, right? Where you press home, uh, you will get all of this, and you will get something called create a page. Once you click on this, uh, it, will, it will come like this, uh, something like this, right? So Facebook tries to categorize uh, uh, various uh, businesses or uh, pages based on their experience and what they feel is the best way to target your audience. They categorize it into six categories, which is brand or product, which is essentially for, uh, for a brand like uh, Bill's Lifestyle or uh, with Micromax or any of the large brands. A company, organization or institution which could be IDA would probably would probably be here or uh, uh, colleges, hospitals, institutions, they should be here. Then there's cause of community which would be you know uh, anti-diabetic forum or um, TB awareness, things, things like that. Entertainment essentially is uh, uh, football teams, movies, if the movies want to have their own page, they go to the entertainment page. Then there's artist, band or public figure which is essentially for celebrities and they have their own uh, you know, privacy and some people actually have seen some of my friends go and put their uh, thing as public figure which is very funny because I don't think they are really that public but it depends on your perception. Now the page for us as dentists, you know, and this is different from other, from other medical doctors, other practitioners, because most of them would obviously, I mean, unless they are they are totally in a niche practice, would be associated with the hospital or something like that. But for dentists, I think the best place to begin is uh, what I call as a local business or place. You see, one of the, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, I feel that a lot of dentists get their, uh, you know, walk-ins or uh, their patient community it will be something that will be very local to them. You know, unless it's a it's a trauma case or a or a maxillofacial surgery which requires a hospital, which requires a setup, and which requires speciality, a lot of us have a lot of. I mean, we look for convenience while choosing a dentist, and we also look for uh, you know someone closer home who we can reach out to, who is in the community, who's known to us, etc. So the best area for you to look is called local business or place. Uh, if you feel you are a big institution and uh, you are not a small business, you are not local, uh, then you can probably choose a company, organization or institution. Uh, this is probably the only two areas you should be looking at. If you really think you are very famous, uh, well go for public figure but then Facebook has a lot of questions around it and I am sure you will be able to answer them if you are particularly that famous. Please don't choose cause of community. Please don't choose brand or product because I just want to make sure that we be very clear that we provide a service which is noble in nature, 
we are not building a brand, we are not give, building a product and finally unless and until you have um, you know I have heard all the dentist jokes so unless and until you have a big drama going on in your practice every day don't choose entertainment. Uh, it, it, it's, it can be, I mean I understand you have instances but entertainment is not not really the place you want to be. So local business or place is my recommendation. Um, any questions so far on page and uh, choosing the category of page? No questions, sir. Okay, perfect. So uh, let's move on to our uh, our next step. So once you've chosen, once you've chosen, uh, create a page, and you have chosen local business or place you will come up to a page which looks like this right uh, which is uh, choose a category business name or place street address city zip code phone uh, and uh, by can clicking, I interrupt uh, one second this you do agree yeah sure uh, dr rajat bhargava is asking why they can't put it in a company or an organization Okay, so this is, uh, you can, I'm not saying you can't, but, okay, so let me take a step back. What is uh, the biggest battle that is brewing in the online space is something called location-based search. Uh, it is when me sitting in, suppose I'm living in Delhi, my parents still live in Delhi and we used to live in this place called Munirka. So if I'm searching from Munirka for a dentist, Google will obviously show me uh, dentists that are local uh, to Munirka, right, first. That's what Google is primed to do. Now, Facebook is trying to replicate something similar. So, if I am on Facebook and I really want to check how many dentists are there in and around Munirka, I will search for Munirka and immediately all the local dentists will show up first. And uh, obviously, I'm among pages. I'm not talking among profiles. Profiles will only show me people who are known to me but pages will show me all the local businesses in and around Munirka. If I choose a company, organization or institution, they assume you have multiple offices and you may or may not be a local business, right? So there, is, there was always a time in India when we wanted to be large, we want, didn't want to be local, we wanted to be big, we want a lot of people to, to know about us. But it is my belief and philosophy that the more local you are, more locally embedded to the community, the more chances you have for building a, 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 a kind of base, you know. So it's, it's my recommendation, though you can also choose a company or organization or institution. As long as, I don't think Facebook really asks you for your license or charter uh, uh, or anything like that, so you can, you can uh, my, might as well choose that. But my recommendation will be to choose a local business or place. I hope I answered your question. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll move on. So you uh, choose your category, which is you know whatever medical practice, general practice. Now the business name or place is very important. It has to be the same name. Uh, you know, I I was um, I was actually uh, advising a few uh, real estate developers and from Udaipur, and one of the biggest challenges was that his company name, his registered name for the company, his website did not have the same name. They had three different names. It does not help us at all. I mean the, the names have to be kind of in sync, they have to be similar. So my recommendation for anybody who's trying to attempt to create your own page, create it in the name of your dental clinic, uh, whatever is your registered name or whatever is the name that you have on your board and make sure that that's consistent. The same holds true for your street address and city state. Uh, city state obviously will remain the same but your street address, you know some of us we have the habit of adding something extra. Well, for example, on my passport, uh, for some strange reason, there is R.K. Buram mentioned there, which is not correct actually. It's got nothing to do with my address. But I'm forced to kind of replicate it everywhere in official documents so that there is no confusion. But when you do something online, your address should be very consistent. 
and uh, you know there are places there is another place called Google Place uh, if you are really uh, working on creating an online uh, presence you should definitely have your uh, credentials up on Google Place and I think that actually looks at Google Maps and pinpoint your location so you need to be consistent with your address sometimes people add a few things you know opposite this near to that unless it is established address uh, don't put all of that put your exact address there and uh, keep it consistent right and uh, what I would recommend uh, phone number if you have a landline put your landline number if you don't use a landline please don't put your cell number we don't know I mean Facebook does not sell information but there is always a chance that some information gets out it will be up on your page you don't want people calling you uh, it will be better to have a landline number there if you are okay with patients calling you directly and you, that's the practice you follow uh, then it's fine if you have somebody filtering your calls then you can give any number you want uh, but but I personally don't like putting my mobile number anywhere so I'll put my landline number let me keep trying because I can avoid picking it up now uh, I would recommend all of you and I know all of us sign credit cards, uh, sign up for credit cards, bank accounts, uh, insurance without reading terms and conditions. Please read the terms and conditions. I think Facebook is changing something to its terms and conditions on the 1st of January. Uh, so you just be aware that they are, they are kind of playing around with some of the terms and conditions. It's not dangerous but it's always best to know what you're signing up for. Facebook has some of the strongest privacy features available on any website. Unfortunately, we don't uh, read them, we don't acknowledge them, we don't use them. They actually, the site is very, very secure. You can actually make your data unavailable to anybody who's not your target audience, right? But we don't read it. We don't. We, have, we just we just go through with it. So I would recommend going through the terms and conditions and going through its privacy policy. It has a lot of features which you can enable, which will disrupt anybody from uh, you know. Uh, getting uh, information from you. So once you've filled up all this, your page will appear. And again, I'm using my own page because I could not uh, get anybody else's page. Uh, I can't use anybody else's page. I have to use one of my own just to show you. And the page looks somewhat like this, right? And uh, I can actually go through, I have Facebook open, so I can go through some of the tabs. Uh, if you are interested, uh, but if you think that's too much information, too early in the game, um, well, I can, I can, uh, you know, uh, not uh, go through that, and I can just show you a, a high-end level of what is available. So look at this. Uh, you need a banner, which is essentially uh, an image, uh, very easy to make. Uh, I'm sure any graphic artist can make it, or you can make it yourself just uh, they have mentioned the specifications you can use uh, paint or anything to to edit that and uh, and it, it says what kind of a website or what kind of a page it is uh, I have taken health and wellness because that's the area I'm going to be targeting you can choose whichever area you want um, as with other things it has timeline about photos likes and more uh, you need to, the, the effort you'll have to put in is given a bit of information about you, fill up the form, get the banner, and I think you are set. You don't need to spend too much time. The banner is nothing but an image. You can uh, you can take a photograph with your mobile phone and, and use that image as well. It's, it's not a big deal. Uh, for starters, I won't recommend wasting too much time on a graphic artist or anything. Later, you can probably get that as well. Uh, there is activity, insights, settings, and help. I mean, obviously, if you need any help with the uh, with Google, with from Facebook, they will they will answer your questions, etc. So at this moment, I'll take another short pause. Any questions so far? Does anybody want to go into the details of what's insights, or what's available on activity, insights, settings? Uh, there is a question from Dr. Shushrut. I'll okay. just read that out for you. But given that we choose category of local business in creating Facebook Place, you said it will be easy to look at the clinic easily on Facebook, in dental clinics list. But if there are three dentists practicing in next door, then all the three dental clinics having their Facebook pages will be reachable to Facebook viewers. How can I stand out? As Dr. Bhargav asked you, if one of the three clinics 
create Facebook page. Uh, I think I think that's the question. Yeah. yeah, that's a very good point. So yeah, so see, if you just create a page and leave it there, and all three dentists do nothing with the page, obviously there is all three of you will be visible for that area. But for in order to stand out, uh, you know, more than the page, I think what happens on the page really helps you stand out. So we're going to be discussing that in some time. It's very, very important that the level of engagement is there. And uh, and what you can do, you can do two things with the page and both I will discuss uh, just in some time. But it's very important. Once you have the page up, you need to do something with it. You can't just let it be. Uh, and, and we'll discuss that. We'll discuss that. Uh, Any question in the part of the question, sir? Yeah. Uh, as Dr. Bhargav asked you, if one of the three clinics create Facebook page in different category, category like brand or company, it'll be will it be easy to set aside and it'll, will it help to get even more noticeable? Uh, not, not really. Unless it's suppose a dental clinic puts up its name in a brand. It's going to be competing with someone like, uh, say, Dentsply, or Colgene Bell Dent, you know, or uh, all these large uh, dental companies that are actually product companies and that have their brands. So, and they have a big marketing budget. They will be spending a lot on all of these. So you may actually it may backfire on you. You got to compete in a category where other dentists or other uh, entities have the same marketing muscle as you do. Uh, so uh, it's it's a good question. Also, you know, brands there will be companies like GSK and Colgate uh, with their toothpaste, toothbrush, and all the likes. Also in that category, so it kind of gets diluted after a while. Unless until you really feel uh, what you are doing, you are a brand. You know, say Apollo Dental Chains or Narana Hidalaya Dental Chain. They can claim they are a brand, so they can probably go there. I would recommend using local business. I always think. You know, localization gives us maximum benefit. It's not it's not the international market unless and until you really want to spread out and you have a chain of dental clinics. Then it's a different discussion altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are more questions. Uh, is it fine so if you want me to read that out for you at this point of time, or should I just note them down? Uh, yeah, let let's go ahead with the questions. Right. Uh, there's a doctor from Dr. Rajat. Uh, Dr. Rajat is saying they already have a Facebook page where uh, mm -hmm. he keeps updating about cleaning activities, but mm -hmm. it doesn't want that his competitor dentist should see the activities. How to block them? <laughs> mm, okay. Yeah, there are privacy settings, uh, and Dr. Rajat. Uh, <laughs> okay, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, it's very important uh, not to know your, not to let your competition know what you're up to. Uh, there are privacy settings by which you can block, um, you know, you can block the visibility of the page to only those people who have liked your page, and you can definitely control who likes your page. So anybody who's another dentist and you think is competition to you, you can you can block him off from even liking your page. So that is a possibility. That is one of the. That's why I said when you do the, and we can do another session, or I can send you in the mail. Uh, the privacy features on Facebook have to be utilized. We don't utilize them properly. There are a lot of features that that are available there which we don't use. That is a very inter interesting question, sir. And I'm sure uh, you must have got this a lot of times. Dr. Nilay Ganatra is asking, is it beneficial if I buy likes on my FB page? No. No. Don't ever see. Um, see, there are organizations like there is this organization called DVM, which is a marketing organization, and they charge you some twenty-five dollars for some thousand, two thousand likes and things like that. Uh, it is. It is good for certain category of people, or if you want to make a statement or you want to get certain credibility uh, to have these likes. A lot of these likes are actually people, some of them are actual people who have signed up for these programs and they, they get paid and they like almost anything. Or And the rest are all 
you know bots or uh, you know artificial intelligence code that goes out and likes things in mass now our objective here is not to make a statement like dr rajat said it will just attract more competition maybe attract somebody who who wants to learn what you are doing i would say our objective here and my philosophy is that we are trying to build a local community a local practice uh, with local patients uh, who who would benefit from your services and for that we need genuine people so buying likes is a very very bad idea unless and until you want to make a statement or you want to like scare somebody i have like 1000 likes on my page be, be afraid of me i don't think it's really um, i don't see any it really helping you and i'm totally against it i mean i anybody for any industry they have asked me likes i said never buy them now i have experimented with them uh, purely from a academic point of view but but it's not worth it i hope that answers the question yes all right so let's move on to uh, so i'm going to skip the showing you the the depth and insights and activity and settings etc it's pretty simple but it gives you a a pretty interesting idea of of what's what's going on if anybody is interested we can do it like later offline or something now once you built this page right and the page is up and uh, and uh, i think it was dr rajat or somebody had asked how do we really stand out how do you really differentiate from three other dentists uh, say in uh, in munirka who have their facebook pages up the difference is in engagement it's not really the page i mean you can have a very glossy page with no engagement or you can have a very basic page with a lot of engagement and how what kind of engagement who do you engage why do you engage and that's why i keep coming back to the local community uh, the local local business uh, concept see more and more people in your area first of all a lot of these people who are walking by your practice or who know you uh, they they might have kids or if they are young they themselves might be on facebook so it's really a sense of you know uh, uh, really a sense of uh, satisfaction for them to see okay my dentist is on facebook too so my dentist is a modern dentist right it's a question of perception it's a it's a big question of perception a lot of us don't want to be stuck with old technology old thinking we want something new we want something modern and if you are on facebook your dentist is on facebook that's cool that's great but we are taking it a step ahead you know how do you engage with these guys literally what do you do how do you talk what should you be discussing what shouldn't you be discussing right so just a few pointers on what you can do it's just my perception you can you know make your own rules because there are no rules it's it's just a question of what we feel can work what we feel won't work so first and foremost i think uh, uh i'm starting from the left hand side on top here what i would do is what a lot of people have done uh with their facebook page is keeping your page updated with regular information uh when i say regular information i don't mean regular information about your practice i mean regular information about the field of dentistry uh, like what is good what is not good in this season what should you take care about uh do's don'ts basic hygiene factors don't eat sweets at night to ask your children to brush your teeth at night brush two two times a day use of dental floss very basic information that that serves as a form of information and dental education for your patients don't put up anything uh, you know very specific to a patient and if you are using any patient as a reference and using his pictures or her pictures make sure you have some kind of a signed consent form because these can later come back to haunt you Uh, make sure the patient is is aware that you're using him in, as part of your uh, pictures or something like that but that is i think one fourth of what you should be doing basic information you know uh, what, how to keep your teeth clean how to avoid discoloration what to eat what not to eat etc 
Number two, I think the second area should be making announcements, which is a lot about uh, suppose you have a new machine, a new practice, some new services you've added, you will be out of station, you won't be available, uh, extended hours, reduced hours, uh, a new uh, junior dentist joins your practice, uh, things like that. That way it gives, a, it humanizes the whole thing, you know, you're keeping them informed so that there is no person who is, who is, who is liked your page, is part of your community, who is taken by shock about something you haven't done. Maybe a renovation, you know, if you have added something, reduced something, new branch, anything you feel your patients would really benefit from, right? Any kind of information that you feel your patients will benefit from, which is specific to your practice. Again, I'm saying these are not uh, dental specific, case specific information, but you should definitely have, uh, if suppose you just performed a very successful uh, root canal treatment, and the patient agrees that you know what it's a it's a great story I should tell this you should go ahead and and and, and you know broadcast it uh, so that so that people are very confident see uh, what I've realized is patients are very scared while choosing a dentist because no, none of us naturally like pain anything that gives them affirmation that you are the right person for the job they would more than be willing and and Facebook is one such area we can leverage for number three is queries. Now this is where I think most of us make mistakes. When we put up a post and somebody comments on it, we don't respond to them. We don't tell them, hey, you know what, thanks a lot, or how much will this cost, and you say, okay, you know what, there's a range and I can discuss that, but, but it's best if you give me a call on this number and I will, I will get in touch with you or something like that. So rather than saying, hey, you know what, I don't want to discuss cost here, so I don't want to respond to this guy, make sure you respond to queries, you respond to comments, you respond to likes, make sure you acknowledge people who are, who are taking interest in your business, because that is the only way the conversation and the dialogue will build a community, otherwise it will become a sense, it becomes a question of one-way traffic, right, I am going to do this and, uh, and, and that's all I care about. I don't care what you say, what you speak. If you look at 90% of the communities on Facebook or even in the social world, they have one-way traffic. I'm going to broadcast, but I'm not going to engage. Engagement is not about broadcasting. Engagement is about knowing things about you, you know, figuring things about you. Some people, uh, I mean, I haven't seen dentists do it, but some organizations make it a big hue and cry about remembering their patients birthdays and and you know putting it up on their on their Facebook page saying hey so and so has a birthday you know that's all wish him happy birthday up to you if you really feel you are such a close lit community in your uh, in, in your dental practice you can do it but information like if it's a dentist birthday <laughs> or the clinics anniversary or staff members birthday why not you know you should it's very interesting to let people uh, get give a human side to the entire business right that's what we are all about and finally, uh, I don't know about this one. I know doctors in the in the U.S. are very fond of doing it. Uh, they give out discounts and offers. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know in India culturally, considering we are considered dentists are considered like doctors are considered close to God, uh, and I hope they are still being considered close to God. But I don't really know whether you should give out offers and discounts. That's why I put it in the gray area. Uh, I don't know. I, I would leave it up to you. I would leave it to your discretion. But there is a there. The people run uh, campaigns like that. They say, okay, listen, I have this 30% off on whatever treatment, and if you come with this code, we will give it to you. Your choice. The last one is your choice. But one, two, three, very important, uh, very necessary to keep the engagement going. Uh, you can also, when you uh, keep updating your page and all, you can also network with fellow dentists, uh, especially those who are not your competition. I think it's not a bad idea. You can have uh, one of the things, one of the dental practices I saw from Bahrain, uh, they do something very interesting. Now, I couldn't use their information because it's proprietary and I couldn't uh, get their uh, uh, you know, clicks, uh, screenshots. 
uh, because they did not want to share them but so they have a very interesting uh, uh, theory that they uh, put up a case and they discuss it once a week and uh, they discuss it on Facebook with another dental uh, setup in the UK and they compare notes on it. So the dental chain in Bahrain puts up a case every week uh, and they have like two or three dentists in their practice and there's a practice in the UK which has two or three dentists and they, they exchange notes and they collaborate on what could be wrong with the patient blah blah blah. There is also a dental chain in the US that does something similar but it's only open to people from the state of Utah I think. So that is very very interesting building an international kind of collaboration discussing case methodology uh, you know, uh, uploading the uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, x-rays or, or stuff like that. But again, there are a lot of privacy norms that you need to be very, very careful about. You have to mask any patient information, especially if you're going to be talking to a dentist in US and in UK because they're strongly bound by their privacy norms and so are the incidentally. So you want to take out any patient information, name, age, sex, blah, 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 has to be out and just, you can just anonymize all of that and you can still discuss it. So there are a lot of things that are possible on your page and I'm not going to put out like five or six things you can do and limit you. I think it's up to you what you want to do with your page but you got to keep the engagement going. The other thing I want to be very clear about is I always encourage businesses to keep the page active and by keeping the page active I mean post at least once or twice a week. So you want to have to sit on it every day that, okay, today is Monday, what do I post, Tuesday, what do I post. I think that's that's not the way it should work. But at least once or twice a week, you should have something that you want to share. Uh, a standard way of doing it is if you're doing it yourself as a dentist, I think, I think it's great because you should be in total control of your page. But suppose you have a large practice and you're, you have people available or your secretary or receptionist is somebody who's very comfortable with social media and wants to run it in addition to her other responsibilities, then you should have something like an editorial calendar, uh, uh, you know, which will run according to the time and you've got to look at the solar and the lunar calendar to figure out what you can post. So in Diwali you can have a happy Diwali card, uh, stuff like that, but it should be all decided that okay, this week I'm going to post this and have these, uh, these at least these material ready one month in advance so that you know for the entire month what all you need to post on Facebook. At the same time, you know, when you get responses, you get questions, you get queries, be available to respond to them, don't uh, automate a response and uh, I think initially till your, till, your, till your Facebook strategy achieves some degree of maturity, I would recommend you be directly involved with what is being posted out there, later you can probably delegate it to somebody else, right. So at this stage, any questions uh, on engagement? Uh, I would like to ask a personal question from my end. Okay. Uh, you had said that if uh, there is uh, people who are uh, continuing, I mean, if there's a patient who's coming in onto our page and they're asking about their rate, how does a dentist typically have to answer that question? Like somebody's asking about the rate, then probably for some it'll be really too high, for somebody it'll be okay. But so perspectives are different, different. So how does a dentist take care that the perspectives, all the perspectives are taken care of? Is it possible to answer yeah, that? So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, Mayur, I'll take a step back and I'll go back to 1999. One of the things I did right in the beginning before even starting out was uh, I used to send this, uh, my assistant, I couldn't afford a full-time assistant. So I had a part-time assistant who was actually a college student. And uh, he was, uh, you know, he was, uh, I think he had college in the morning and he used to be free in the evenings and afternoons he was free, I think. So every... Uh, uh, once in a week, I used to send him to all the regular dentists to figure out what are the rates. <laughs> and the guy had gotten so good at it that he used to cold call and figure out the rates. So I think <laughs> well, if anybody asks you the rate and you put it up on Facebook, I think it's a it's not a good idea. Uh, but I would generally recommend them to, you know, ask them to come over for a checkup, or you can give a free checkup as well, uh, you know, uh, and just say, okay, listen, I'm. I'm I'm not going to disclose my rate on Facebook, but but I think you should come over and, and have a look and see if there is a synergy, right, between what you can do for the patient and, and what he expects. Not all patients are for everybody, you know.
be very very honest with that sometimes i feel you know the different practices have different strategies but i think the strategy that works the best is is to work on fewer patients uh, and increase the value so so i would say that um, you know definitely don't disclose financial information on the page uh, like Dr. Rajat said, it might be available for your competition to pick up. Also, it is not fair to discuss all this uh, without even seeing the context. I would recommend to bring them in. If they're the first, if it's the first time patient, then you can definitely, you know, afford to invest in a free checkup and see where that goes. Right. Uh, there's a question from Dr. Pritam. Dr. Pritam is asking, uh, I find okay. putting cases on personal account a little awkward. I don't want to display my cases on my personal account. What kind of account should I use as my professional account where I can display my cases for other doctors and my patients can also see it? Dr. Pritam is an endodontist from Mumbai, sir. Okay. So Dr. Pritam, there are a couple of things you can do. And uh, I think Facebook allows both. You can either, like the page, for example, you can pro probably totally disassociate it from your name uh, though it will be linked into your profile uh, which will give you a very very independent uh, you know kind of uh, entity a platform where uh, there is Dr. Pritam the dentist and there is Dr. Pritam the fun loving individual but if you want to like totally separate them and you want no correlation between them at all then I would recommend to open a profile page in the name of your clinic uh, that can create some challenges because it will ask for the uh, time uh, for when you were born, right? That's how it, it assumes Facebook assumes everybody is a human being. And if the practice is not 18 years or more, it might reject your application. So in that case, I would recommend just open a profile under your clinic's name, put your details on it and see if it takes them or not. It's a, you'll play around with it slightly. But it's possible. So then that way you will have two different profiles, your personal profile and your professional profile. And then your professional profile you can link the Facebook page. That way both of you, uh, I mean, there's no correlation between both of you. Right. Uh, so there's another question from Dr. Shushrut. Dr. Shushrut is okay. asking, is there a provision in Facebook where dental clinic Facebook page, which is a business category page, can be enveloped in the Facebook profile page so that both the pages can come at one place where business page can also be accessed from the profile page and easy to be noticed by friends. Yeah, so that's what I have. If you go back uh, a few slides, uh, now these, though this is a blog, it is essentially showing up on my personal profile. Uh, and these are actually, these are blogs for now. I'm assuming in the future these can be businesses. Uh, and that's why I went ahead and created that. I've set up a following and uh, actually let me do if I can show you my, if I can show you, this is my Facebook profile. This is what it looks like. And, uh, and if you go to my, home page, you can actually see my blogs here. I have only one profile on Facebook. Um, I have tried a different strategy for Twitter where I have two different profiles, one for healthcare and one for non-healthcare. But here I have only one profile. So if you if you go to my profile, you can see my health healthcare page. That's how I put it. But uh, yeah, that's, it's not a bad idea. But like what Dr. Uh, the, Dr. Pitam was saying, he didn't want any correlation between his life and his uh, dental practice. In that case, I would recommend creating a different profile altogether. Does that help? Uh, I hope it does. Uh, so Dr. Shushot, if you've got further questions, you can just type it down for us. Dr. Vikram, you can proceed. Okay. So we are almost at 3.10. I will take about 10 more minutes and talk about something which requires a bit of investment but it is worth trying out for once uh, which is grow right now the uh, so far whatever we've discussed uh, 
is relatively free apart from your time, right? Your time and your energy costs and uh, the pixels used up by your computer which is a depreciating asset. So there is a cost associated even to free Facebook but those costs are, are I mean you don't have to pay anything, it, account is for free, page is for free. Uh, obviously the number of man or woman hours that you or your, your assistant or secretary is spending on them is actually a cost and obviously your computer is being used and there is electricity cost. So there's, there are some costs associated with it. What I'm going to talk about is something else. It's about running campaigns on Facebook. Uh, you can run campaigns on Facebook and, and we had discussed how do I differentiate uh, from others? How do I get likes? Well, one way of differentiating was definitely being very engaged on your page, talk to people, acknowledge them, answer their queries, etc., etc. The other way of doing it is definitely being, uh, you know, adding a lot more local people, not buying likes, but but doing it organically, um, and and make sure that people who visit your clinic are aware that you're on Facebook and things like that. The third way of doing it is actually this is after going after net new business, right? Net new business altogether. Now, if you look at this uh, system, Facebook today is probably one of the cheaper uh, entities. The costs are not much, but I assume next year the, the rates will go up, the ad rates will go up. But you can actually advertise on Facebook and you can advertise either your entire dental practice or you can advertise certain services which you feel are very unique to you in that region, things like that. And you can target your advertisement to an extent that it reaches only certain people and doesn't reach everybody else. Let me show you something of what we had done, I mean before this webinar, I had actually uh, gone ahead and invested some of my own money. Uh, when I, I uh, just notice the fact that I'm using invested and not spent, because I believe that I'm learning, and all of these are great learning opportunities for me. So two days ago, I took I took this uh, one uh, ad, and there are certain guidelines on ads, and we can discuss that in a different conversation altogether. There are certain guidelines of ads, uh, and I took one such ad on this. Uh, webinar and I put it out on Facebook and I decided to park some money around it, right? Uh, let's look at it now. So this was my, uh, this was my ad, uh, if you look at it. And uh, this is a screenshot and it says boost your post to reach more people. So it's like almost like a post which I'm boosting. I can also create an ad which is separate. It, it requires uh, a creative design as well and we can discuss that as well. But you know what I did? I took this post and uh, I labeled it my first webinar to dentists, which incidentally is the truth. I've never given a webinar specifically for dentists. And I said why they should be investing in Facebook, blah, 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 free webinar. And uh, here I have the opportunity to actually uh, get some keywords, right? And uh, I can choose my audience as anybody who likes your page. So people who like your page would incidentally be patients who are already a part of your practice. So if you really want people who are a part of your practice, who already come to you but haven't been very active to know about something new you're doing, right? Uh, you should definitely start choose them. That will help you uh, increase the awareness in your existing patient base. Suppose you want more references and you want patients uh, who are actually friends of your existing patients to come to you and uh, you know India is a great market for references. Everybody asks, do you know a dentist? Do you know an orthopedician? They always ask you first. I've had random conversations with people uh, who still mistake me to be an active dentist and they ask me about, do you know any ENT specialist will be open on Sunday or something like that. So there's always a big scope for references. So if you want people to become aware of your practice overall through people who like your page, who are essentially your patients, you should use the second option. But hypothetically, you want to grow your practice. You want to just increase your practice. You decide, that, you know what, I'm going to target anyone new. Then you can select their persona, right? And you can choose that. You can choose the country as India. Set your age limit again, depends on what kind of a practice you have, if you're an endodontist, 
you know you have your own uh, uh, criteria at least the, the target age group you know prosthodontists you have your own age group periodontists have their own age group you start targeting them and then you can target by gender as well and then you can start putting in your you know your interest areas so what I did was for my ad I showed it to anybody who was a dentist I chose specific people in a particular age group and for this experiment I mean this is not what I chose actually I chose something like from 22 to uh, I think 40 that was my age group but generally you know I feel that younger dentists will be more open to newer ideas maybe MS conception or maybe that's how the world works but that's a, that's an idea I took and I chose all you know, distinction between men and women and I started putting certain keywords dentistry, dentist, dental degree, young dentist worldwide etc etc and then I started showing and I activated it you have to allocate some money to it I think I allocated something like uh, actually I just told you not to discuss money on, on Facebook so let me not discuss money on the webinar but I put some money I mean it's your choice you can it's as low as 200 rupees to as high as 10,000 rupees you can you can choose and you can choose how long long you want the campaign to run I chose two days because I activated the ad on Wednesday I think Thursday and Friday it will run through Thursday Friday and Saturday three days and and then you can let it run so this is not a free feature it costs money so you want to be very clear how you want to do it when you want to do it do uh, you want to run it in lean times? Do you want to run it in very heavy times? Do you want to run a specific offer? What is it that you want to showcase? But I think this is a feature that is being used extensively now. The rates are bound to rise. I heard that next year we will see new rates from Facebook. Uh, and, and that could probably be a dampener. But nevertheless, I think it's a great uh, a tool to use this. and. Uh, and I think all of you should give it a shot at least once. You have your practice set up. You have to, uh, uh, in the beginning, you have to register with your credit card, and after that, it automatically uh, takes money from your credit card every time you run a campaign. So I think it's a, it's a very interesting tool to boost your page, right? So uh, any questions? Uh, any further questions? Uh, there's a question from Dr. Rohan. Dr. Rohan is asking, can I okay. approve or disapprove posts on my page? Will someone liking my page automatically gain access to my profile? No, no, no. Nobody can do anything without your knowledge and permission. You can, you can uh, set uh, in the, in the, and probably I should have done that, but we didn't have enough time to cover it. Uh, in the privacy settings, in the settings for your page, you can make sure that the setting that every post that you can first of all you can bar others from posting on your page right you can do that they, that nobody should be allowed to post on your page apart from yourself in case you don't want that, that to happen you can also say that all the posts have to be approved by you first and you can delete anything that you feel is inappropriate on your page so everything is controlled by you the person whose profile is linked to that page controls everything so that's why I keep, I asked you in the beginning, in the middle somewhere, that till your practice achieves a certain degree of maturity, please don't uh, outsource this to anybody else. First of all, don't outsource it to any agency, it's very dangerous. But if you feel you, you, you don't want to, you don't have that much time, you have to outsource it to somebody in your practice. Uh, then in that case, please don't outsource it immediately. First, run through everything yourself. Ensure all the privacy settings are in place. A couple of months later, you can outsource it. Right, that I think answers the question. Okay, any, any further questions? So you can proceed. Okay. All right. Thanks. So I I want to uh, kind of end uh, with some common myths, you know, that that hold us back. And I've heard a lot of them over the years. And I, you know, I did a I spoke to a few dental dentists who are friends of mine from my class, 
and even some senior to me and I figured out some of the problems that some of the perceptions they have about Facebook before I did this webinar. And uh, I think the uh, most important myth we have is that Facebook is for fun. It used to be for fun, not anymore. It's a very, very serious business. Uh, there are some statistics that are available globally. They do not, they are not particular to dental or the healthcare industry, but they say things like, you know, an average individual likes or follows uh, nine to ten brands on an average and he is uh, likely to make a purchase from three of those brands on Facebook, right? He follows a brand specifically because he's, li he's likely to make a purchase from them. So if somebody likes you on Facebook and following you or practice on Facebook, he's most likely to come to you for treatment. Just remember that, that's a very important statistic. Number two, the second myth I've heard is that, you know, if I have a page on Facebook, then people will come and uh, they will, uh, you know, write bad things about my experience. If I've had a bad experience with a patient, which all of us do, all of us have this one special, you know, if you look at the Millhouse classification, a skeptical or a critical patient who's already had a bad experience or is by nature critical and does not like something you do and creates a big hue and cry uh, about you, well, there are chances for that and with consumer protection in place, we need to be careful. I agree to that. but. I mean, if you are not, I mean, if you have a recent practice, you have nothing to worry, you follow all the right procedures, uh, you are following the right privacy norms, I don't think, I think the negatives of being there are far lesser than the positives of what you can gain. And remember, we are talking about building the practice of the future, a very engaged practice, where patients are engaged with your dental practice as such. The third thing, uh, third myth I've heard is, is for free. Well, it's for free, yes, but Remember, you're going to spend time on it, you're going to spend electricity on it, if you're going to hire somebody or your secretary will manage this post, you're spending some effort on it, it takes a lot of time, time means money. So Facebook is not for free, it costs you, especially if you run campaigns further, it's costing you further. Uh, number four, uh, somebody said, uh, this is the commonest one among them, uh, is that, uh, you know, I don't want, I don't want my, uh, my kids to think, or I don't want children to think that, that you know, the dental practice is not serious. Well, you know, the, I've heard the youth have moved away from Facebook. They don't consider it cool anymore. Uh, the degree of seriousness with which a lot of brands approach Facebook, I mean, look at very large brands. Look at IBM, the amount of money they spend on Facebook. After all, IBM is in the business of technology, which is B2B. What, are they, what business do they have on Facebook? But they are there. It's because we have, we have created a global community of people who are on Facebook and all organizations are run by people and people need to know where you stand on a certain issue and, and Facebook is serious business. It's not the good old days when, you know, when Mark Zuckerberg decided to, I don't know how many of you watched that uh, brilliant movie called The Social Network or read the book, but it's not the fun, uh, fun and games when Mark Zuckerberg decided to, you know, create a uh, a platform where they could rate uh, girls from their from their from their college. Those days are long gone. You know, it's a very serious business. Uh, there is no there is an element of fun to it, but it's mostly very serious, mundane, boring kind of a job. And 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 Facebook marketing and, and having your dental practice on Facebook is no different from the actual business of running your Facebook. It's uh, running your dental practice. It's just that you are communicating through a different channel. So I think all those four myths are debunked. Uh, it, you have to think through this, you have to have a strategy. I think it's very important, if, especially if you want to build a community. Uh, a lot of dentists, at least globally, are getting onto Facebook with pages. The engagement is slightly missing. Uh, my recommendation would be to get on, a, get on it, get a page, uh, construct it properly, uh, get the right amount of engagement, uh, set your prof profile settings, privacy settings, uh, get the right kind of engagement, respond to queries, and, uh, and you know in a couple of months it will actually start paying uh, benefits and then you probably would need to even check with patients uh, you know where they heard about you and how they got here. Finally there is a big uh, you know there are things that can be done further including profiling of your patients, understanding their health behavior, uh, creating dental services specific to the health behavior of your community or the people on your Facebook page. Uh, that is an extensive topic by itself. Uh, and uh, and probably it's it's an overkill for this session. 
So with that, we will try to keep close it now. If there are any further questions, I can take them. Those of you who had specific questions, uh, you know, you can write to Mayur and Dr. Mayur, and I will probably respond to you uh, through email or anything like that. Right. So if there are any further questions, I'll take them now. Somebody wants uh, the email address and your phone number. Uh, Dr. Rajat wants your email address and phone number. I think Dr. Rajat, I'll be, uh, what I'll be doing is uh, there'll be an archive video that I'll be emailing to you today evening. So in the carbon copy of the email, I'll, I'll be putting Dr. Vikram's email address so you can contact with him directly. Is that good? Yes. So, sir, uh, there are no further questions for today. Okay. Then, uh, guys, thanks a lot for being a great audience. Thank you for listening to my my philosophy on Facebook. I hope all of you start a page, and uh, and and the good doctor who didn't have a Facebook profile probably has a profile by now. Uh, <laughs> after all my talk, so I hope you guys have fun uh, doing this, and uh, do shout out, do reach out to me if you need any uh, any advice or if you have any feedback for me. Is, uh, that'll be really helpful to me as well, right? Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Vikram. The webinar was exceptionally wonderful, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm sure our delegates would have loved it as well. I'm sure a lot of misconceptions about marketing on Facebook have been put to rest. For delegates who are not aware, Dr. Vikram has been my teacher in marketing. I have done a social media marketing course under Dr. Vikram exactly four months back. Since the time I have done the course, my entire attitude towards marketing has changed. Rather than going for likes, I try to go for organic, more organic activity and building interesting content for my target audience and try to engage them. An important announcement for tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's webinar is on oral implantology. Uh, I'm sure you can see that on the screen right now. Uh, the webinar speaker for tomorrow is Dr. Komal Mazumda and the webinar topic is called Current Concepts in Implant Aesthetics. So, webinar will start exactly at 2 o'clock tomorrow. So see you all tomorrow at 2 o'clock. Thank you very much.